way boxing fans, what's the deal? All right, man, let's switch it up today. Let's talk about this undisputed fight that's going to take place next weekend. I want to give my quick prediction about the fight. Um, for some of you guys out there, some of you traditionalists out there, you guys are really anticipating this fight because we get to see an undisputed champion at the weight division. Haven't seen an undisputed champ since, what, uh, the night that, uh, well, Jermaine Taylor, he had beat up Bernard Hopkins that night. He's the last undisputed champion that we've seen, at least for the men's boxing. You know, and I know that uh, some people, they kind of, they don't understand this. Some people think that you still just need the three belts, the uh, WBC, WBA, IBF. And people are just kind of forgetting it, that in 2007, the criteria changed where you needed to hold not only those three, but the WBO as well simultaneously to be the undisputed champion. Um, credit to both of these guys, man. Before I get to my prediction, credit to both of these guys for making this fight happen. Uh, you know, because Terrence Crawford could have done a lot of diva type things to avoid this fight. He could have easily said, "Hey, who is Julius Ndongo? Um, he hasn't beaten anybody. I already beat um uh, Ricky Burns, so he beat my leftovers." And you know, he could have made a lot of excuses. He could have said. Uh, he needs to prove himself, or he needs to make some title defenses and fight some mandatories. I mean, he could have just made up anything he wanted, right? He could have made up he doesn't put asses in seats. He could have made up a lot of stuff that I hear a lot of these fighters say to avoid unifications and to avoid an undisputed type of situation, all right? Julius Ndongo, he, man, he is fighting like a guy that's, that uh, doesn't have any time to waste. And what I mean by that is he beat... What he beat, uh, Troy Noski, what was that, 2016 December. Then, what, five months later, he fights Ricky Burns. And then four months after that, he's going after Terrence Crawford for full undisputed. So we're talking nine, in a nine-month span, he picked up two belts, and now he's fighting the, the other guy that has the other two. That's how you get shit done. Now, some of you may argue, oh, he, he doesn't have a... Um, he really doesn't have a leg to stand on because he's not popular. He doesn't demand money and... That's fine, man. If you guys want to take that route, that's fine. To me, I look at this as somebody that says, hey, man, I'm trying to unify this division. I want to fight the best. And that type of schedule, that just lets me know you're trying to fight the other title holders, period. No in-between fights, no warm-up fights for Ndongo. No, uh, I want to fight somebody that's like Terrence Crawford so I can get a better feel for his style. And There's just no excuses. I love the no excuses, man. I'm a big fan when I'm watching these fighters fight, and when it comes to certain fights being made, no excuses. Every damn thing doesn't need to be built up and marinated and sautéed and, you know, all the terms people use nowadays, all right? So I got to get that out there. All right, now, when I break this down, man, when I break this fight down, a lot of, you know, and I hear a lot of fans, they have their opinion. They say that uh, Terrence Crawford fighting at a super lightweight, he's a, a weight bully. Now, in 2013, after the, um, what was that guy that he fought? What's the dude that stretched out American? Marius Breedis? No, nah, not, not Marius. That's the damn cruiserweight. Uh, not Marius Breedis. What's that dude's name, man? Um, I was going to fuck with me, man. What's that dude's name? Uh, Breedis Prescott. I said Marius Breedis. Breedis Prescott. After that fight, I was like, man, I can see this kid fighting at welterweight one day. You know what I mean? So so four years ago, whenever that fight took place four years ago, I thought that Crawford would be at welterweight one day. But I'm hearing people say that he's a weight bully at uh, super lightweight. And when I look at Crawford, he's only, what, 5'8 with a 70-inch reach. You know what I mean? So, and I'm thinking to myself, was like, well, shit, was, was Victor Postal, was he a weight bully? Because he's, what, 5'11", 5, 5, 10 and a half or something with a 72 73 inch reach even thomas delorme was what 5 10 5 11 i mean these guys are two three inches taller than uh crawford with you know three inch height advantages on them so i mean he's fought some other tall and uh guys with long reaches so it's not like everybody he's fought has just been some small guys man but regardless of that though when i break down the style of these fighters man um Oh, man. You know, Ndongo, 
he has a 50% KO percentage. It's not extremely high, right? It's not like 90% or nothing, but he still knocked out half the people that he fought. And the left hand is something that Crawford's going to have to look out for, obviously. Uh, now, I'm going to be nitpicking here when I'm breaking down these styles, all right? So this is from, you know, just from the outside looking in. But when I watch Ndongo, I believe he need to me, I like, I think he's more efficient when he doesn't bring that that back foot, his uh, left foot off the ground when he's trying to land that left hand. And But to me, that's him using his reach uh, to the very inch. I mean, he's he's trying to get everything out of that reach because he likes to fight you at a, kind of at a, at a long distance. And he likes to reach with that left hand. Sometimes that back foot come up. And you can be off balance. You can be countered. A guy can turn you and counter you while you know while because you're not in position. You don't have the balance to come back with nothing else. It's just one big uh, left hand, one big left hand. I like when he's has his feet planted, man. Even when he is leaning and stretching out, he can try to double up the left hand. I seen him double up the left hand against uh, against uh, Ricky Burns uh, in that fight. He threw a lot of. Uh, different combinations with the left hand he was kind of arcing it with the left hook and then coming back with a body shot or throw the left hand throw a straight left hand and then come back over with a, a right hook you know what i mean so i think he needs to throw some twos and threes in there too and not just look for the one big shot because if that's what you're going to do i think it's too predictable i think that uh you know crawford will be um still looking out for it, but i think that style is just that will be too predictable Got to double up on the left hand. Work the body, too. Even the fights that I've seen, I went and looked up a lot of Ndongo's fights. Um, I can't remember all these guys' names. One guy that I did recognize besides Burns and the Troy Nansky guy was, uh, what's the dude? Kaiser Mambuza. I remember when Mambuza fought uh, Zab Judah years ago. I actually picked Mambuza to upset Zab. Zab stopped him, but Mambuza I thought was winning that fight up until the stoppage. But anyways, that's the one name that I did recognize um, but, and he has to make that jab count and some of the fights he's pawing with the jab. And to me, timing can disrupt a speedy type of fighter or a guy with good reflexes or that can move around the ring, just timing. And I think the pawing with the jab, I, I, just, I just think that's too predictable to paw with your jab and then try to land a straight left. Paul with the jab. I think that's super dick, but I think he needs to make that jab count. And I've seen him do it. I've seen him actually work jabs to the uh, stomach, uh, work the jabs up top, snap the jab, you know what I mean, to get Crawford's respect. Crawford is very, you know, he's a versatile fighter. You know, he can switch from righty to lefty. He can move around the ring. He can give you that outboxer type of look. He can, uh, you know, step inside of your reach. If you got a long reach, step inside of it, step to you and kind of make a dog fight. You know, where he's throwing uh, threes and fours, three, four punch combination, threes and fours, and on, on the inside, maybe some fives. You know what I mean? He could mix it up. But one thing about Crawford, Crawford never came across to me as a, uh, like a, like a defensive guy, like one of those guys that barely gets hit. Crawford is there to be hit. He, he does move his head now. He does, and he does have good legs. But I'm saying he does get hit. I've seen him get touched. With guys with shorter reaches like Gamboa, you know what I mean. Gam Gamboa has quick ass hands, but um, even Diaz, I I seen Crawford get hit now, man. Post all, they all landed some good shots on him. Just he was able to take them, and he's the type of guy. Uh, he has that type of attitude that if you hit me once, I'm gonna hit you seven times. He has that type of attitude. Um, I think in Dongo, if if this goes to a slow pace, I think that's gonna favor Crawford, man, because I think Crawford can move around the ring. And if Ndongo's looking for one shot, I think Crawford's going to um, counter him most of the night. But that left hand, man, like I said, doesn't have a, a super high KO percentage. With that left hand, you're going to have to be aware of that, man. Because it put, I mean, he is hurting guys with that left hand. He put Tronoski to, man, he, that dude was in La La Land somewhere. There's another fight. I forget these guys' names, man. But the guys that he was fighting... Those fights that he was having, I believe those fights that was in South Africa or in Africa that he was he was having, he was piecing them dudes up, man. Dudes falling to the ropes, dazed, confused, you know. So I'm a favorite Crawford in the fight, man. But this is a very dangerous fight for Crawford. It's very dangerous, um, and I think Ndongo has the tools. He's long as far as his reach. 
He has good height. He shows no fear. He brings the fight to guys. It's just that if Crawford steps inside his reach, will he be able to fight that type of fight where it's mostly hooks and uppercuts and their shoulders are banging against each other? And you, you know what I mean? It turns into a physical fight. Does he have that that dog in him to uh, win those type of fights? And uh, I, I don't know, man. I don't know. I'm a favorite Crawford in this fight, man. Uh, I'm going to go Crawford by decision. I think the fight will go to decision, and I think Crawford's going to win the fight. Very tough fight, though, man. Very tough fight. And I, I don't know if those fights were in South. I believe they were in Africa. I forgot exactly where in Africa uh, he was fighting those fights. Was it right in Namibia? I'm not sure, man. I forget, but uh, very intriguing fight, man. It's very intriguing. I'm trying to think what else, man. Um, I think Crawford's going to fight Southpaw, and this may this may turn into who can land their left hand or who can control the pace with their left hand. Um, and I think Crawford's going to go to Southpaw early. He he may just start the fight off fight off in southpaw but i think he may go orthodox the first round and then switch to southpaw um but when he's but when he's outside i mean but when he's at that long range he has to be careful man because because in dongo he uh like i said man you'll think you're out of range with him and then he'll just that that left hand he he uh stretches his reach out even further than what is listed because he's bringing that left foot off the ground. And he's really stretching out to, to land that, that uh, left, man. But if he's not on balance and he's missing or, you know what I'm saying, Crawford's able to catch that left hand and counter back, I think Ndongo's going to be in trouble. You know, but if he can get Crawford's respect, he can back Crawford up, or he can get Crawford into like a fast-paced type of fight, where they're just throwing combinations, throwing punches, but at a good range where he can use his reach, he'll have a chance to beat Crawford, you know, but I think Crawford's going to have to step inside that reach, and he's going to have to test and don't go from close range, you know, but uh, Crawford does have the legs too, man, to stay on his bicycle and try to make and don't go reach and just keep making him reach. And while he's reaching, boom, counter him with a right hand. Or when he'll, you know, he'll be fighting softball. So counter him back with his own left hand. Or right uppercut or right hook or left hook. Turn him. Make him keep reaching and turn him. Make him keep reaching and turn him. See, that's what I'm saying. Crawford has different ways I think that he can beat and don't go. I think he can beat him on the bicycle. Got to be careful with that left hand. But I think he can beat him. I think he has the tools to beat him on the bicycle. Where he's moving around, making and don't go reach with the left hand overextending, boom, countering him, you know what I mean, over the top with his own left hand or uppercuts or whatever it is, and turning him and, and making him uh, follow him around. And then when the dongle's not expecting it, then boom, slide in on him. Slide in, uh, as I call it, you know, the line in the sand, meaning the end of your jab, step inside of his jab, step over that line, and then get right up on him. You know what I mean? But it's going to be a great fight, man. Congratulations to both of these dudes for making this happen. No excuses. See how easy this is? I wish the heavyweights would follow this. And I know there's more money involved. There's mandatories, blah, 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 blah. These dudes got it done with no excuses. I know there's certain circumstances with voluntary or, um, not voluntary, but uh, mandatory and Stavern and Pulev and Ortiz. I totally understand that, man. But these dudes just make it, they, they just made it look real easy. <laughs> they made the shit look real easy, man. But um, should be a great fight. Yeah, that's really it, man. You guys let me know what you think in the comment section. I'm out.